is but a day that was recognized last Sunday, Easter is a season. It's a lifestyle. So continued happy Easter greetings, blessed Easter greetings to one and all. We are glad to have everyone joining us here at the Moscow Goolsboro Charge, our virtual worship service on this April 19th, 2020. We carry on with live streaming our service to you today following safety precautions set in place due to the coronavirus pandemic. And a weekly reminder that although we cannot be together in the church building, we are always one together in the family of God. By way of the Holy Spirit through the saving actions of the risen Christ. The church defined as the people, are one in faith. And for the time being, then, it could be said that the church has left the building. So Easter joy is abounding all around. In believing, we are woven together forever with peace and hope in unending divine love. Reminder, if I am not on your screen, then please click the upper, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, click on my name, and then pin me to your screen. We begin today with some notes on the service and announcements, as usual. We ask that anyone using the video feature mute your video and audio at the bottom of your current screen. Anyone on the phone, please mute your phone. And then during the service, during prayer requests, please unmute your devices and then remute them when you are finished. Then you will become part of this recorded digital service. Our announcements, the North Pocono Food Pantry, it does continue to be open uh, during regular hours for drive through pickup. There are some items that the pantry is running low on and this week, those are peanut butter, cereal, soup, and juice. So if anyone is able to donate any of those items, please drop those off on Thursday mornings at the food pantry. And the pantry is very appreciative of any donations that they receive. And we thank all of those at the pantry who continue to be out there volunteering their time to keep the food pantry opening and running smoothly. Please remember to mail in your weekly offerings 
as you are able to assure our ministries are fully prepared to assist others. And please check out each church's website or call the church offices for, for further information on sending in offerings. Also, Moscow does have a PayPal account set up to receive offerings. To use the PayPal option, please see the website homepage. And Goolsboro has now a new website, so please check that out. It has many updates, and we are thankful for that. In addition to the prayer request that we have today through the service that we share here in worship, if anyone has any others, please contact us by email or by phone so that we can add your prayer request to our list. Let us begin today to worship our God with a word of prayer. Let us pray together. Lord of life, our God of resurrection hope, as you have raised Jesus Christ from death, raise us, Lord, to new life in your tender care. Draw near and fill us this day with your Holy Spirit. Call us back, Lord, from places of distraction we might be in. Remove all confusion and concern from our being, that we will be open to worship you with all that we are, to feel your constant presence among us. Show us the path of true life, that we may know Easter joy beyond joy in your heavenly provided light. It is in the name of our risen Christ that we pray all of this. Amen. Today I will be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. And we begin with a scripture reading from the New Testament in the book of 1 Peter in the first chapter. Verses 3 through 9. This section is praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here ends this reading. May God add a blessing this day. And now we will join in song wherever you might be. Because he lives, let us sing wherever we are together. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, he lived. He lived and died to buy my pardon. 
Sunday of Easter is John 20 verses 19 through 31. We pick up exactly where we left off last, last week. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, was one of the twelve. He was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was there with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other miracles and signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, melt me, mold me, use me this day to bring your message to your people. Amen. Well, today is part two of Easter. Last week, the empty tomb, the resurrection, revelation of the risen Christ happened. This week, we are in the upper room with the disciples where the resurrection of their faith will happen. And we will reflect on what all of the implications are, what all of this means for us. What happens with our lives in this? The disciples here are, at first, a sorry, scared bunch on that resurrection evening. They're hiding out in the dimly lit upper room. They are in fear of the Jewish leaders, waiting for the fallout of everything that they have gone through, and because of their known connection to Jesus. Grief and fear were consuming their thoughts. Even though the women had said they had seen and they spoke with Jesus, they still did not believe. This was not a pleasant place to be where they were at. It is into this sad, anxious place that then Jesus, their teacher, their friend, their master and Messiah appeared out of nowhere. Remember, the doors were locked. Jesus didn't walk in or climb through a window to get into them because he is no longer bound by time and space. He's in an obvious changed state. In the midst of their darkness, he brings light greeting them with those words, peace be with you. You cannot ever contain the peace of Christ. He shows them the scars of his suffering, and the atmosphere changes immediately to one of elation and praise. It evolved into a pre-Pentecost moment as Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on them saying again, peace be with you. And he adds, it's your turn. I'm sending you out now to minister to others in my name. Here they were, ashamed, feeling guilty. They left Jesus when the going got rough. They denied him. But instead of addressing any of that, Jesus offered them his peace 
his spirit, and he entrusted his whole mission now to them. He knows they are no longer those weak, abandoning souls. They have Jesus risen now and victorious in their lives, as he told them it would be. Plus, the mighty Spirit of God was upon them to guide them forth with compelling confidence to prevail. And that peace, that peace that Jesus greeted them with of liberation, that peace of God, every one of them needed that so desperately to right their wrongs. In Christ's peace, there is much forgiveness. Forgiveness is a mighty releasing force in itself. Forgiveness is so powerful in this life, it can make or break people. It is a movement, almost, one could say, of the church. So the disciples went from thinking they had nothing left to having more than any of them could fully comprehend. Only one thing is wrong with this picture. One of the disciples was missing, Thomas. And when he comes back to join them, he hears this story of them seeing the risen Christ. And he's like, yeah, right, prove it. I want to see him and see the scars and feel the scars. And until then, I will not believe you. You have to give Thomas some credit here. Who wouldn't doubt this? They just doubted it. This is huge news. And where was Thomas during this time when he was missing? He might have not been hiding out in that upper room. He might have been out in those streets where rumors were running rampant about what had happened. But he is still in a state of loss, that is for sure. There's always some doubt in a state of loss. Now fast forward a week and Jesus appears again with those same words, more affirming, relieving assurance. Peace be with you. And Thomas gets his proof. Jesus said, check it out, go ahead. And adds, stop doubting and believe. In his personal hands-on experience with the risen Christ, Thomas responds, proclaiming my Lord and my God. That was a mighty moment of proclamation. Very mighty moment of proclamation. God comes when we least expect it. This is not only a story of doubt, it is also one of faith, of God's ability to change that doubt into faith. Doubting can actually be a good thing if it is approached in the proper manner. We can't hold it inside and let it be stagnant. But we have to ask questions, and that brings us to knowledge and to faith. Faith allows us to be willing then to embrace our doubts. Ask those questions, find the answers. It is in believing in something that is beyond our ability to comprehend. Faith isn't easy. It takes work because it can be un uncomfortable. It can take us to uncomfortable places. And it begs us, our faith, to ask those tough questions in life at times. Life in this world challenges us on what to believe. People struggle to believe in something or someone every day. Society yearns for encounters with the risen 
Christ. They need, they need so desperately to hear the words from Christ, peace be with you. We are blessed in believing. We receive life in our belief, for our Savior lives, which means we possess a living hope. Forgiveness, peace, and hope, they're basic spiritual necessities. As God's people, we have more than enough, enabling us to be equipped, humble servants, stewards with the abundance of what we have been given. Our resurrection response, it begins individually, personally. We are ex to extend it to the wider community who may still be lost in need of Jesus releasing revelation. Those yet to encounter the full message of Easter. Jesus greets each of us to, despite our doubts, give us peace over and over to share the good news that we are to do. And some people are stubborn. Some people won't listen when we share the good news, but they will get it someday. All we are asked to do is plant that seed of faith. But how will each of us respond? to Jesus, and to others. Hopefully, with obedience to our call, being ever aware, committed to following through on what could be our baptismal and membership vows, to confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, to serve him as our Lord, to minister with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our witness. Serve Jesus as the disciples did. That is our call. And then we have these enriching verses from 1 Peter to follow up everything from the gospel. For Peter was there. And 1 Peter, what we hear this morning they're part of almost a baptismal sermon that he is giving, one could say. He is encouraging the early believers in their faith. Yet he's pointing out that those of faith will face trials and tribulations, but they're to be refining and preparing all for someday to accept our heavenly inheritance, rich, merciful wealth. It is a beautiful thing that we are given. Praise be to God that in doubt there is believing and that through the risen Christ, through Jesus, peace is with us always, not just once in a while, but forever. We can look ahead then with this great faith and be faithful with anticipation of assured salvation, with an attitude of praise and joy at all times. For Christian living is a journey. It's a journey through this life that we live, but it is not our destination. We are urged on this second Sunday of Easter to travel in the spirit of the resurrection, to continue on to be amazed continually of the unexpected that God initiates in our lives, to receive that unexpectedness from God, and do good with it as it comes from the goodness of God. So continued Easter greetings to you. Live in the love and the faith in the peace that is the risen Christ. Amen. 
As we continue to worship, we do so with a time of prayer. So if you have any prayer requests, please move your mouse to the bottom of your screen and unmute your microphone. When you are done, please then remute the microphone. If you're on the phone, please do the same. And I need a pen again. <laughs> Good morning, David. Good morning, Pastor Laurie. Yes. Greetings, greetings, everybody from Florida. We have a prayer request for two of our guys on Long Island. That's our daughter-in-law, Sharon, and our son, Kevin. They are at the front lines that we keep talking about and hearing about. And we would pray for God's shield of protection Amen. Sharon and Kevin. Thank you. So for Sharon and Kevin. Yes. She is a nurse. The hospital is full of corona patients. Kevin is a firefighter who often is called upon to take the patients to that hospital. They are at the front lines. Well, we pray for them and we remember you also in our prayers to support Praise them. God. Thank you, Lord. You're very welcome. Thank you, David. Anyone else have any prayer requests to share? Pastor Lori, it's Sarah Schof. Yes, Sarah. Um, we've been praying for my friend Sherry, who um, had some cancer surgery, and um, she's been going through chemotherapy, and Friday she got some wonderful news. Um, it says, we got my full results. Three tumors are gone, and one... That's the size of a fist has shrunk more than half, and her leg cancer is is clear. So we're wonderful. We're what beautiful news, Sarah! Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yes, Pastor Lori, uh, Cindy McIntosh has shared in the chat that uh, she's asking for prayers for the for the family of Jerry Pemataro. Uh, he is hospitalized with COVID nineteen. Okay. Jerry Penataro family. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you very much. Any others? Any other prayer requests, concerns, or joys? I'd like to bring up a couple joys and thank a couple people that have been instrumental in helping us bring God's word to you each week and make things possible to reach out with our messages uninterrupted. And they're making that extra effort to enhance Holy Week. They did wonderful things and Easter, our experience to just find that joy in the risen Christ. Um, and that is uh, Tina from Goldsboro and Aaron from Moscow. We thank them very much for their continued work during this time. Any other prayer requests? Pastor Lindsay. Lori, this is... Yes, Lindsay. Lindsay, yes, thanks. Um, I would just like to give thanks and have joy for um, Jennifer Luth, who's the teacher of our preschool, and Barb Havenstreit and Jenny Shimalewski, who have been doing an amazing job keeping our young children engaged during this difficult time. Um, John loves getting his mail from Barb every week, and he loves when we pick up his work from Jennifer at the school. And, you know, kids love routine, and it's been difficult, but um, I, I'm very thankful for them. Yes, thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, we continue to serve our children from here. And we do so through the preschool, through Jennifer, our teacher, and through our Sunday school teachers, Barbara and Jenny. And we do thank them for sending out things to the children and for that continued love of God and the scheduling of consistency, as Lindsay is talking about. Thank you for recognizing that, Lindsay. Anyone else? If not, let us begin in silent prayer. Pray from your heart to the God who loves you. Let us pray. Okay. 
Lord, hear our prayers. Holy God of powerful adoration and breathing promise of life anew, forgive the fears and doubts that we might hold on to this day. Plant those Easter seeds in us to push through, Lord, what might be a packed, empty, lifeless ground of old habits and false trust. Transform any hurting that we harbor into greater faithfulness. Catch us up into the dance and the melody of your Holy Spirit, that we will grasp onto the hope and the strength for living in these days. In the living water of Jesus, which flows infinitely, wash away our failings, Lord, and shape us into active, disciples of Christ, living fully into the message of the resurrection with compassionate, bold faith, with abundant possibilities to serve you, and with overflowing love. Lord, we thank you for the gift of believing, for the gospel reminder that we are so blessed to receive and for the witness of those first courageous disciples. Also, Lord, we have grateful hearts for the living hope that we possess in the story of salvation. Lord, we do lift up much in our hearts to you this day, just between self and Savior. As also, Lord, we lift up families who are grieving, we also, Lord, lift up to you Sharon and Kevin and David and his family. We pray for them as they are on the front line, just fighting this virus, Lord, that you would shield them and keep them calm and assured and protected. And Lord, we lift up the Jerry Panatero family to you as Jerry is fighting the COVID-19 virus. Lord, embrace them all and put your healing touch upon him and all those who are so very sick. Let them feel your healing come to them through your great power. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for, for a great report for Sherry. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayers for her. We also thank you, Lord, for Jennifer and Jenny and Barbara, who serve as your servants well. Also for Tina and for Aaron, we say thank you, Lord. And Lord, again, we lift up those who are working out there and volunteering. We pray for, again, your calm, peaceful spirit to be there. For patience, we pray for patience in society at this time as we all continue to journey for safety. And Lord, we ask for plentiful supplies that will help others, that you would grant those and see that they are distributed. And Lord, let us choose faith over all else. Let us trust and pray more in your presence that is always there to greet us. Give us insight and understanding Give us persistence to stay the course. And Lord, let us know that your love is abounding in every breath that we take, inhaling and exhaling in grace. Let us now continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you may be on this second Sunday of Easter, 
know that this spirit of God is with you. The risen Christ is present. We are ever united in merciful grace. Continue to reach out and share the wondrous miracle of your Lord in safe ways. Live aloud as you can your faith. Live it aloud in action and in humble relations of peace and joy that is Easter. For we are Easter people spreading the kingdom on earth. Some ending reminders for you. Please listen again to our devotions through the week on our podcast, and we will have information and inspiration going out through emails and on the church websites and social media sites as we engage in our alternate spiritual relations through this temporary time of spiritual bonding as it is and renewing relationships and every day discovering new opportunities, preparing all of us for what is yet to come on our journeys of faith here in this world that lead us ever onward to our paths being united in the glory of forever. Stay tuned, my friends, to the Moscow Goolsboro United Methodist Charge as we continue to put God's grace in motion. Receive now this benediction. Move forth as cherished believers with fearless faith that overcomes all fears. Go with awareness of promised, joyful, obedient life and trusting conviction in God that anchors you in times of doubt and uncertainty. Go with the serenity of the risen Christ and the blessing of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Your Savior is risen. Alleluia and amen. God bless.